that just saved you from a phishing attack. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that is that is impressive. Actually, I didn't I didn't know that at all. That is, is apart from all the other stuff that I I've learned during this. That is definitely hmm. something I had no idea about. So. Hello, welcome to Get Modern. I'm Dean Ellaby. Um, and this isn't Andy Jones for the first time uh, ever, so uh, I'll let Stephen introduce himself. Stephen, over to you. Hello, I'm Stephen Melvin. Um, I'm a programmer and, uh, you know, one of my uh, interests would be um, security technologies, which I'm going to be talking about today, but it's just one among many. I will sort of... <sighs> I will, I will confess I've, I've watched some of these uh, videos and I find uh, I, I struggle a bit with some of the, uh, the, the, the Microsoft jargon and things. So I'm sort of hoping I can, I'm hoping we can figure out some common language and uh, uh, actually communicate. Hmm. Well, obviously we should say that this is, this is, this video has come about based on uh, one of our videos that we did for, was it the, the, um, it was Andy's video, was wasn't it? The, the uh, was it the temporary access pass? Yes. Yeah, I think that's that sort of spurred this conversation that we have, which is is culminated in this video. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm um, sort of, uh, you know, I, I know a bit about the various uh, multi-factor authentication methods and things, and I, I saw something I actually knew a bit about. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's wonderful well, to you have know, that's you. That's the thing. It was like, I, 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 yeah, I was seeing all these. I, I, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about. And then it's like, ah, yeah, I get this. I get this stuff. Okay, right. Um, well, thanks yeah. for persevering. <laughs> and it's wonderful to have you to have you on. Um, as I say, Andy's not joining us today. Yeah. It's just us. So, um, yeah, we're just going to yeah. have a quick chat about MFA, passwordless, all the stuff that Stephen has um, essentially got some insight around that I maybe do maybe don't we'll we'll see so this is a, a just a, a very yeah. general chat about that kind of technology so yeah yeah so i i guess i'll start with just a definition of what multi-factor authentication is fine um yeah so essentially you can categorize all the different ways of doing authentication into three categories which is something you know, something you have, or something you are. And so some, something you know is stuff like a password or a pin, and something you have will be something like a phone or a hardware security token. And something you are is stuff like bi biometrics, like a fingerprint scanner or face ID, stuff like that. Right, yeah. Um, so multi-factor authentication is essentially just having more than one of those, mm. you know, two-factor authentication is just having two of those. So, you know, a, a simple example is just um, like a, a chip and pin transaction or when you're paying for something, you know, the card is something you have and then the pin is something you know. Mm. And, you know, a, a, a contactless payment is is just that's a single factor. It's just something you have. Yeah. Which is, you know, is, is more risky, but I think that's why probably why it's limited to a certain, um, well, exactly. It, it seems that the, the, the banks have decided that, um, you know, for small transactions, a single factor is, is sufficient. And mm -hmm. um, particularly when it's something you have rather than something, you know, uh, yeah, good point. So, actually, yeah. Yeah. So an, an example, so another example to clarify um, what sort of multi-factor authentication is. So if you were to have two things that weren't different factors, but were just sort of the same factor twice, like if you were to ask for two passwords, then that wouldn't be multi-factor authentication. And, you know, that might seem a bit rid ridiculous, but, um, you know, I've seen bank websites that have a password and a PIN. Yeah. or a password, password and memorable information or something. And they're, they're both something, you, something, you know, and so they, they are actually, that's not really multi-factor. That's, that's sort of single factor twice. 
Mm. But is it not kind of dependent on the strength of the factor? You know, something I know is arguably less strong than something I am. As in, mm-hmm. if my finger is probably more st- strong as an authentication method than my password, because I'm less likely to give someone my finger as as a you know <laughs> as a, in some kind of phishing phishing attempt. Yes. Um, yes. So I th- I think one one way of of categorizing sort of the the move to multi factor authentication is. I think all of them, all of the two-factor authentication methods that we're going to be talking about, all involve the introduction of a something you have. So everyone's using passwords, which is the something you know, and by introducing a something you have, that increases the security dramatically. And, and what if in, you were partic- to just just re- sorry to stop your flow, but what if you were to just replace the something? you know, with something you have, would that increase? Well, it sort of depends what the, what, what the attack you're trying, trying to protect against is. Right. So one of the, the, the biggest, so th- there's a number of big problems with passwords, you know, the, the attacks that are, are common and are causing problems every day. And one of them is just that, uh, basically anyone with an internet connection, can just try passwords on your website. So from anywhere in the world, it can sort of guess passwords. So if you've got a weak password, then someone might be able to guess it. And there's sort of two approaches to that. One is to pick an account and then guess lots of passwords. And the other is to pick a weak password and then try all the different accounts to see if any of them have that password. So you can, so that's called password spraying. So spraying is 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 better it has a better success rate because you don't get you don't trigger the the, the account lockout do you so you don't try multiple times right. on the same account so you're less likely to trigger any protection they've got in yeah. in the account Yeah it's it's easier to make it look like perfectly natural behavior lots of people just trying to log in as normal Yeah yeah, yeah. as opposed to someone who's clearly seems to have not know their password trying over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's a really big problem. And essentially the two factor authentication methods pretty much solve that problem. And the way they do that is by introducing a something you have, cause it's, it's that something, you know, that is, is really open to that kind of attack of some, someone guessing from afar, whereas mm-hmm. something you have, they really have to come up physically close to you and take it. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's a completely different kind of threat. And the, the, the threat that's actually happening in practice all, all day, every day is, is the, uh, you know, the, the remote one on the passwords. So that's, that's the one that's a concern. Well, the threat right that's now. M- more, more possible to automate as well and to scale yeah. is that one. Um, it's not too easy to scale stealing people's phones or stealing people's. Um, yeah, and there's there's much so. more chance that you'll you'll get caught and risk yeah. Uh, yeah. risk going to jail and and all kinds yeah. of things. So, you know, if if you can if you can take the problem from something that's easy for someone to do with little consequences to something that's much harder to achieve with much greater risk, then you've you've increased your security by quite a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, no, it makes sense. That's, that's a good. So that was essentially an introduction into, into the, the the types of authentication there are. So the three major factors. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I mean, that's that's. I've always I've always sort of known that in in my head. You know, the, the something you have, something you um, mm-hmm. know, and something you are. Um, but it, it really, it, it's only recently when I've started looking into the security that it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and especially the, yeah, that, that credit card idea with the, with the chip and pin makes, yeah, it puts it into context that I really understand. Um, and it also, uh, we might be going, I don't know, it might be going a little bit far into this one, but the, the, the pin, the chip and pin scenario is, is also the, the way I try and help customers understand 
why a pin on their laptop, mm. for instance, is better than them using their password to log into the laptop. Because you can't, if, even if you tell someone the pin for your credit card, they can't mm. use that unless they've also got your credit card. Same with your laptop. They can't use the yeah. pin unless they've also got your laptop. So they have to have the thing in order to get into it. Um, and that right. does sort of help help explain why a pin, why a four digit pin, for instance, is better than a, a 16 character password. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a pin in a specific sense where there's a something you have involved and the pin unlocks the something you have like yeah. a, a card or a, you know, something built into a laptop or a security key or something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, and then just, just going back, it's just going back onto the, yeah, the contactless thing. I was reminded yeah. that the, um, the we're talking a lot about shopping i don't know why i'm i'm fixated on 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 credit cards or or, or shopping but the 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 limit for contact which is like 35 40 45 quid or something if you um mm. if you're using your card but if you're using your phone tesco and mm. then the big the big supermarkets have a have unlimited and i guess i'd never thought of why that was i really? assumed it was more it, I, don't, I think I, I don't know why i assumed I just kind of accepted it, but it maybe it's because in order to use it, you have to unlock it until you have the thing that you have and you have the thing that you are, which is the biometric or the thing, you know, which is the pin for the phone. So you've got that two factor so that perhaps ah, they've gone to, okay. to unlock that limit, and essentially make it unlimited. Right. So it, in that sense, it's a bit closer to, um, the chip and pin than contactless because yeah. it is two factor in some sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So I, I, I don't know. Um, we could go through some of the different things. So actually, uh, one of the things I'd like like to say is um, I've I've gone through one of the problems with passwords, but there are another couple of big ones, and among the different um, two factor authentication methods. Uh, some of them actually help with these other things and others don't. So for example, phishing is one of the other big ones. Yeah. And so phishing, some of the two factor authentication methods actually solve the phishing problem and others hey, it, it kind of still susceptible to phishing. They maybe make it a slightly harder for a, you know, a, Fishing, what's it? What's it called a fisherman? What to pull off? You know. um, an attacker. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I don't, I don't, I have never, I never really thought of it as a fisherman. <laughs> I'm going to use that. I am. Gonna... <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, um, so, what do you, what do you mean then? Well, explain. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get to that. Um, I'll just want to mention So there's that problem. The other problem is, uh, what happens if the password database is breached and all the password le are leaked? That's the other problem with passwords. Mm -hmm. And again, there are some of the possible ways of doing authentication actually even solve that problem. So I, th I think it's probably what we should probably do is actually go through each of the, um, the two factor authentication methods that tend to be in use and sort of yeah. describe them a bit. Sounds good. Um, right. So the, the first simplest one is just, um, you know, sending a text message to someone's phone, which is, is the one that's people seem to most commonly implement, uh, cause it's. I guess it's straightforward uh, to get users to to use that on sort of websites and things. Yeah. Um, you know, the the downside of that one being just that um, the text message network isn't really a secure thing. So apparently there have been instances of you know people getting access to someone's account by getting access to their text messages. I'm not sure exactly how you do it, but mm -hmm. there are there are just sort of plenty of holes in the, the SMS system. So it's sort of better than nothing, but it's kind of yeah. not, it's not where the future is. Yeah. Well, I, I heard on that one, the, it is actually, um, you know, a, a service that the operators provide in order to, as a, as a convenience thing for customers 
and if you have the right credentials or you have the right um if, if you're the right type of organization you can request that service from any operator to take over that user's number to receive a ne- to receive a message so right there you go right um, yeah that, that'll, sudden, that'll suddenly be it not, yeah that, suddenly yeah. not so secure <laughs> um yes so, yeah. yeah that was that it's was, sort of sim- it's sort of similar to e- email where you know it's, it was never designed to be se- secure and mm-hmm. so there's just sort of holes in in it where it is there are just ways to um to get around it and so it's not great yep yep um so a, a sort of more advanced uh method is the the time-based one-time password which is probably okay. best known as the the google authenticator app right because I, th- I think they have essentially pop- popularized that mm-hmm. and that yeah. that is a it, it's a, a standardized algorithm that uh, anyone can implement so there are there are lots of different apps that you can use mm-hmm. and you can actually do it on the the microsoft authenticator app although it's not the primary way to use the microsoft authenticator app yeah i do i do um, use that if i if i open up authenticator yeah. i've got i've got all my my customer accounts and stuff that i need mfa on but then i've got you know spotify and uh, spotify um last pass and, and various other things that um yeah. have mfa um and i use yeah. that for them I, i've i've actually not got google authenticator on my phone anymore which it was my primary and now right so, yeah yeah, yeah. But it's it's sort of a standard algorithm, so lot, lots of websites and things can implement it quite easily, and you know anyone you can use whatever app you want. It's quite convenient. Uh, there's there's even a way to use it with the the YubiKey, uh, which I use, because um, there's many ways to use a YubiKey because uh, it supports lots of different protocols. But it's got, there it's, is a way. It's, 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 it's not got a display. Ah yes, yeah. Well, I, I think I think maybe we could get into that in another video if you're interested. Let's let's schedule that in. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, I have yeah. I have two Ruby keys, <laughs> uh, and yeah. um, I use them for one authentication method. Uh, so I'd be very yes. interested in that. Let's schedule that in. Then. Good. Yeah. Good. But so so. The, the time is as, as the time is one time pass. What essentially is you, when you sign up, you get a QR code, you scan it with the app, and then after that, the app just gives you a new number every thirty seconds. And mm-hmm. then when you want to log in, you you put in the number, and yes. that that is very very secure um, for the purposes of solving problem one, which is people trying to attack you from elsewhere on the internet yeah uh, that yeah. that pretty much solves that problem but... because mm, mm. well i was going to say because in a phishing attack it's not normally live it's not normally instant unless it's unless it's over the phone for instance phone phishing is, is possible but you know in, in a phishing thing where you are asked in a website to put in the code it would there'd be a, a serious amount of automation for them to instantly use that within the 15 or so seconds that are right. left in order to actually so get so in. so that's the thing the question is does it solve phishing and I, and I, and that is sort of the answer is it makes phishing harder because they can't just collect the details and use them later they kind mm-hmm. of have 30 seconds to use the code but if they were sophisticated enough to set up a phishing site that you know ask the user to put in their details and then they immediately use those details as the user was putting them in, then it, it sort of, it, it would yeah. work. It could. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't solve the phishing problem. It makes, it makes it harder. And I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe that helps a lot. Cause I, I, I don't know if, um, I don't know how much effort you, it's it's worth putting in when people are putting together phishing attacks. I'm not really sure, but yeah. um, it, 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 it certainly it, it ups the level of sophistication. But it is still possible to to fish. Yeah, but that, you know one of the one of the reasons you you gather password isn't necessarily to get into a specific service. It's to gather passwords in order to get into many services that the, that the users probably reuse their password for or use a very similar 
uh, variation of that password for. And the thing I always forgot uh, forget is that is that the attacker is also you know might be a computer gathering the data and and scaling that that collection of data and sending emails and all that kind of stuff. But it's it's actually a a human that's going to be doing the the end bit where they're manually guessing mm. your password and they, if you if you put a one at the end they could probably guess you might put a two if you put january you, you might put february so it is it's a human hacking a human rather than a computer hacking a human so yeah yeah sorry yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll... well okay so th the other thing about the time based one time password so in relation to the third problem, which is the password database leak, it also doesn't really help with that. In that, if you know, if the date password database leaks, the secret that's used for the one-time passwords is also leaked. Well, I mean, I don't know that for sure because I don't necessarily know exactly how people are going to implement it in practice. But I suspect they're just going to keep the secret in the database with the rest of the the passwords, and so. Uh, if the password database leaks, so does the the secret that the the time based one time passwords are based on. Well, it's... so it doesn't really solve that problem either. <clears throat> okay, let's 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 dive into that one then. So I okay. assumed that that uh, it's let's say for instance I'm using um, I'm protecting my last pass account using Microsoft Authenticator. You're saying if the LastPass database was leaked and broken into and, and stuff, that they would also have some way of understanding what the code generation thing would be. And in my head, yeah. I was thinking that would be owned by Microsoft Authenticator rather than something LastPass was providing. But am I wrong? Right. Right. Yes. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how the time-based one-time passwords work. What, what you what you get is there's there's a sec there's some secret code, so when when you get the QR code, that contained within it is some random secret password of some kind, a sec secret piece of information. Mm -hmm. Then what what the what the app does is it it takes that, puts the time, concatenates it with the time in the thirty second in increments, and then runs it through a hash function. So it's sort of some secret that is shared between you and the, the server, mm -hmm. and you both have to have that, then the current time in 30-second increments, increments, and then it's um, putting it that through a hash function, a one-way hash function, then you get a number out. So it changes every 30 seconds, but, and, but essentially there is, a, there is a shared secret underneath it. Which is, oh, in some ways, similar yeah. to a password. In the end of the day, so it's just a piece of information that's random and only known to you, and and but it has to be stored in the server in order for them to be able to generate what the code is at any given time. They would have to have that. Now there might be some way where they could do sort of the equivalent of having a, you know, a special hardware security thing at the other end where they don't put that information in the database and maybe they store it in a more secure way. But I sort of doubt anyone would bother. I, I don't really I, know. I don't know why I thought it was going to be implemented at the, at the authenticator end. Um, because that wouldn't make sense at all, would it? Um, now that you've explained that and I've thought about it a little bit in my little head. Um, well, the thing is, it, it, it's it's a lot simpler than you would imagine. You'd sort of look at it and think, "Oh, this looks really sophisticated." It's 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 really quite straightforward. Yeah. Uh, whereas, if if we go on to what um, you know what the authenticator keys do with things like the FIDO protocols, you know that's actually using public key cryptography, and it's it's quite sophisticated. Whereas the time-based one-time passwords is it's really really simple. Mm. Okay, fair enough. So, so are we going to go into the the push notification next, or is that a, an extension of the time based one time password? Um, we can go at the push notification next if you like. Okay, just because it's it, it's. Do you have have you got any information on that, or or should I just introduce my question? I'll go ahead. Well, a lot of customers will choose the push notification because it's more convenient, as in. 
they are logging in, they type their username and password, and then they get a push notification. And, and on their, I say customers, me, <laughs> on their watch, they go, get approved, um, done. Mm. That's a lot simpler. Is that significant? It feels less secure, but it's on my device. And as I guess as long as, in my head, I'm thinking as long as I know that I'm pressing approve because of an action I took, and it's me that's mm -hmm. requesting authentication, uh, authorization. Um, then it's all right. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Well, I mean, sort of go through the problems and which ones it solves. So, if if someone's okay. trying your password from the other side of the world, then you know a, a something will pop up on on your phone, and you know, ideally, you'll say no. No, that's not me. Um, although, you know, there's sort of questionable whether how much you have to train users, mm -hmm. you know, whether they'll just approve it anyway, or maybe they're, they're sort of doing something in the computer and they don't really know which things yeah. might need that authentication. So they might just accept it. And exactly anyway. what might break if they choose no. Will they, will they stop yeah. getting email? Will they lose access to file servers? Will something important, will yeah. they lose their job? But if they press no, you know, there's a an incentive to press yes, isn't there? Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've seen a version of it where when you're signing in, it, it shows you a code and then the notification yeah. asks you to pick one. And yeah. that seems to solve a lot of that those problems because then you're definitely associating the notification with what it is that you're actually doing yeah. and if it's asking you which one of these things and you have no idea then obviously yeah. it's not you yeah and so i yeah. i think that that simple thing it seems That's like that, a, a that, big that, deal that, <laughs> yeah 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 i think that does that does make a significant difference but uh, you know as i say a lot of customers will choose that as the as the the the, the, the second factor because it's so simple and it's so easy to to use day to day, they just press approve and off they go. And and I think the reason that, you know, that thing where you said um, training users, Microsoft mm. did a thing where they, they released this, this free version of MFA, which essentially allowed you to do that thing where you could set up multi, have a text message, phone call, uh, one time passcode or, um, or push. And everyone went with, a lot of people went, went with push. And mm -hmm. it actually, and actually what, what the free version did was it didn't let you do context-based um, notification. It didn't it didn't sort of check based on when you were authenticating in a particular way. It mm. just made you authenticate every few days. So so literally, the users were doing yeah. nothing, <laughs> and then so they would have to they'd have to log in once, and three days later they'd have to log in again. And nothing they okay. did actually instigated that login, I, that that push. So so we were literally training users to just press yes, for for such a long time, um, and so the push notifications in really? that yeah in in that methodology are terrible because you you get nothing. Well, from well I don't that even insecure. understand what even is the point. If if there's no discrimination between whether yeah. you accept or not, then it, it's, I don't know what, what you're even trying to achieve there. Like what, like, well, even at least... MFA. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That, and you've gone tick, through the pain the of box. registering. <laughs> you got, yeah, exactly. And it, it, it literally is that. Yeah, There's okay. the, the concept of the Microsoft yeah. Secure Score where you, where you, you okay. get points for, um, for having MFA enabled on all users. It doesn't, necessarily mean it's used in a secure way but it's enabled so yeah yeah anyway that was that was a something i've, I've yeah. hit in my in my daily role yeah so i mean yeah so i'm continuing on from that if the the problem of phishing say if someone's logging into a phishing site and then they get a notification. It's like, well, yes, yes, that is me. I am trying to log in right now. Right? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so if if the fishing site is capable of relaying, you know, the me as soon as you log in on the fishing site, it's doing it concurrently, like like what we're talking about with the time based one time passwords. Mm. If it can do it simultaneously, then you'll get your notification, and because you obviously believe it, if you're typing, you know, if you've typed in your password and things already, then you know you'll just say yes. So. You know, we're already saying it's a bit dubious in terms of for solving the first problem. The second one, like, I, I, I don't know. I don't think it really helps with, with phishing. Again, mm. it's a bit, maybe a bit harder for the, the person implementing the phishing site. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it doesn't really help. And I, I don't know it probably, it probably does help with the leaked password database problem. I'm not, but I'm not really yeah. sure about that because it would involve understanding a bit more about how exactly that is implemented. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it's sort of it'll depend on the details of how they implement the push notifications, I suppose. And but but aren't the I'll give them the know, benefit when... of the doubt and assume that they're doing something reasonable there. But but know. surely they don't they don't store the the thing um, that generates the 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 tokens in the same place as the user and passwords. But you're right, it could. Um, but you but know, if, when, when if someone really cared, they wouldn't, but I suspect that people are going to, in practice, it's just going to be implemented in the, the most straightforward way mm. where you just, you just put it in the database with everything else. And the thing is, right. one of the things is with a password database, you do usually um, you don't actually store passwords in plain text. You store the hash of the password. And so that even if the password database leaks, they still have to run some kind of brute force attack to yeah. trying different passwords to actually get it out. With the time-based one-time passwords, I mean, there's, you, you can't do anything like that. It would just be, it would just be kind of a, a secret will be in plain text if it was in the database. Oh, I, mean, I don't think this is necessarily a specific thing that's going to be a, a big deal of a problem that compared to all of the other problems. It's just in terms of comparing the different methods. Uh, I mean, I really like the time based ones time, time password in terms of its simplicity, but it's just that um, the more, well, essentially the, 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 the winner is the ones that involve an actual hardware token. Uh, because they actually solve all of the problems. Um, yeah, no, it's indeed. just compared to those. You're blowing my mind. You're blowing my mind. Um, <laughs> okay, next. Ruin, ruin my next thing. Um, well, okay, we can go on to the um, we'll go on to the U2F, which is so essentially. There's two different protocols when it comes to using uh, hardware security tokens. It's, it's essentially, it's FIDO1 and FIDO2, we, okay. where FIDO1 is referred to as U2F and FIDO. So the, the big difference is U2F is universal second factor. And the idea is that in addition to your password, you use a hardware security token on top of the password. So it's two, it's two factors. Yeah. Something you have is a hardware key on top of the password, something you know. The That's like FIDO the traditional RSA token you might have got in, in, the, in the past. I was given, I had like six of them on my keychain while I was <laughs> mm -hmm. I was logging into various different customers. So I, I, I can relate to that. Yeah, okay. Well, were those the ones with the, that give you a number on the front? Or, yeah. Or the... Yeah, the rolling, rolling code. Yeah, because that's... That's actually more like the time-based one-time password. Oh, of course password. it is. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> All right. Okay, yeah. 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 That that essentially that's uh yeah it's a hardware implementation of the time time-based one-time password, yeah. where in, instead of storing it in an app on your phone, it's it's stored in a physical device. That's but it's essentially the the same thing as that. Indeed. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what is what I'm trying to visualize what the the hardware token you're talking about is. I'm probably being oh stupid, like a YubiKey. But... Like oh, I see. Right, got you. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Right. Honestly, I'm struggling a bit with um what to call these things, 
because you know Yubiki is a specific brand, and there are lots of different ones. And then there's kind of is it is a a token? Is it a key? Is it a mm. you know a, like and I, and I, I don't know. Maybe maybe someone in the comments uh, wants to suggest some ideas because I'm 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 not sure what the mm. I, I I keep saying different things. Yeah, I mean, and I'm not sure I'm communicating right. clearly. Token has to be the right the right one. Um, yeah, you go maybe. for token. Okay. Yeah, but so what does how does smart cards fit in? You know, I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, well, you know, the thing is that that hasn't come up in terms of uh, when I've been looking into what people are actually using on websites and things for mm. for two factor authentication. I mean, a Yubi key can be can function as a smart card. That's one of the many things it can do. Yeah. But I don't know. It does just seem a bit more like that's uh, maybe maybe more maybe a bit of a legacy technology in that people aren't looking to use that in the future specifically. I don't know. There are probably there are probably plenty of use cases where it's the right thing. But in terms of you know log, logging into online services using second factor and things that seems to be you know yeah it might be an enterprise thing or a options. corporate thing um you know mm -hmm. in an enclosed i think it's been around a long of... a long time yeah yes yeah probably <clears throat> legacy really isn't it so i should probably get my head out of that so yeah uh, maybe unless unless uh someone wants to uh uh, let me know what I'm I'm missing there, but in in terms I just have not come across it in terms of uh, logging into you yeah. know stuff. Whereas you know the plenty plenty of websites support um, the time based one time passwords, and there's a handful that support um, UTF. So so something like Facebook and Google, you can use U2F, which is the YubiKey plus a password but okay. um microsoft seem to have um skipped over that and they're not supporting that and they're instead doing the the newer fido2 protocol which is passwordless right so you know there's generally two two ways to do two factor you either, you either do it where one of those factors is a password and then you augment it with something else, which is going to be a, something you have mm -hmm. in addition to the password. And then, you know, the alternative is to say, well, we'll have two factors, but neither of those are going to be a password. One of them will be a something you have. And then either, you know, a biometric like a, a fingerprint or a face ID or something, or... Uh, something you know which like a pin but the pin you know as we've discussed doesn't function the same as a password and functions yeah. to kind of unlock the something you have yeah yeah so so because so really, yeah. so, so, a password list has been a buzzword in in microsoft for such a long time now so for you know for a, a few a few years and it's really starting to to become more of an actual thing now um yeah but it really is I mean, it's, it depends how you look at it. So from a user perspective, they won't have a password, so it's passwordless. But from a mm -hmm. factor perspective, it's passwordless. As in, there are the three factors, the three possible mm. things, it, password isn't one of them. So from, yeah. from both it's, angles, it's still a, it's, it, it's a two factor authentic, if it's a two factor authentication, it's, it's, it's much stronger than a, a password. Yeah. But you know, you just you don't have a password at all, and I mean, one of the big problems with passwords is just it's it's so hard on users trying to remember them all and being given all these crazy rules and, and you know and and everything. So just from an ease of use point of view, having none of the factors be a password, I mean, essentially the usability becomes like like the chip and pin you would mm. use to pay for something. Yeah. So if you have a, a, a FIDO2 key and a pit with a pin on it, then it's it's kind of like it's like a chip and pin. You you you, you have to remember a pin, but it's not nowhere near as difficult, and it's much more much more secure than a password. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, good. I think I've got that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So Microsoft so, so... has gone for, for, for passwordless, which is FIDO2. So that's the same. When we talk about passwordless, we mean FIDO2. Well, there are two things that Microsoft um, have for passwordless. So there's either a FIDO2 key or there is the Microsoft Authenticator app, which is the, the push notifications that we were talking out before, about before. And the idea right. there is there's a something you have, which is your phone. And because phones have a, a lock screen, you can either set on your lock screen. That can either be, a, a, you know, a something you are like a, a face ID or a, you know, a fingerprint or a, a something you know like a pin but either way it's a second factor on top of the something you have mm -hmm. and so just by utilizing the fact that you know pretty much everyone's already got a, a smartphone and the, and that already is a something you have and then it's usually got some something built in to it for, to have a second factor right. so from that you've got a two-factor passwordless thing just from an app um, built in your phone, mm -hmm. but you know we've, we've already uh, we've already mentioned some of the issues with that. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, indeed. And I'm, but it is but it is a two factor and it is passwordless. <clears throat> yeah, indeed. So the user just doesn't have a password to type in or remember or forget or change and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was I was speaking to someone from Microsoft a little while ago. And this is well before they'd really implemented passwordless, but they um, they were telling me essentially that they, they had a password, but they didn't know what it was. So it was set by by IT, and they okay. were given... It must have been some early implementation of the, of, uh, implementation of the temporary access thing. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially, it might have been a manual implementation of the temporary access pass, where essentially, okay. if, they, if they needed to get in and set a second factor, like their, their authenticator app or something then they would call IT or get in somewhere to, to reset that, get a password mm -hmm. temporarily, and then it would be automatically mm -hmm. changed to something random and, and strong. So, you know, Microsoft have probably been doing that internally for a little while. That was three years ago now. So maybe they were f mm -hmm. further down the line than most organizations are with that kind of concept for their own staff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely pushing the passwordless thing harder harder than anyone else. Mm. Uh, yeah, for for consumers they are. Um, for enterprises, they've got very little control. Mm. Well, can... in in that um, you can with the consumer Microsoft account, you can just go in and use passwordless right now, and it, it's it, it was a weird experience when I tried setting it up. It just it. I try. I was. I'm logging in, and it's not asking for me for my password. And I'm like, "What? I don't understand what, what's going on here." But the enterprise it seems it's a bit further back. But I think they'll they'll get there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it's control, isn't it? So with with enterprises, they they don't own the authentication. Um, yeah, they don't own it, the the Active Directory necessarily. That's being used for, as as the identity provider. Um, they you know they don't mm -hmm. own the Azure AD. <clears throat> Um, that is being used by the enterprise and they don't control the policies and all that kind of stuff. So to just blanket enable that, like they're able to do with their own right. consumers. Yeah, um, exactly. It's, it's not really in their power. They just have to kind of encourage people to yes. adopt it yeah. as opposed to just being able to turn it on. Yeah. 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 So can I, um, can I shed some doubt on the, the temporary access passes? Ah. Oh. Andy's going to be so sad. He was really chuffed with that as well. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's just I'm I'm just sort of worried that um, you know if it's possible for you to phone someone up and say, oh I've I've uh, I've, forgot, I've lost my phone. I need you to send me a temporary password. Then it's presumably possible for anyone to phone up and say and pretend to be you and say. Oh, I've lost my phone. Can you give me a, a temporary password? So the the thing about the, the temporary access password is the the social engineering angle. It's mm -hmm. the well, if it's a human making the decision as to 
you know to give out the, the code then you're opening up all of that all of that um possibility mm-hmm. and and it's it's more um <clears throat> it's more painful i guess when um when that social engineering does succeed because at the end of that you've got the the attacker or the bad actor um having generated a, or registered a strong authentication method so then mm. it's implicitly yeah. accepted by everything and trumps almost everything with regards to security yeah. so that that's probably is a bit worse um i mean a lot of organizations don't just don't just allow you to to re to to get access reset a password you know we've been doing that for for decades now obviously for mm-hmm. taking taking calls to reset passwords and a lot of organizations will do things like um you know asking for managers names or asking for for building mm-hmm. addresses not addresses but you know things that the the employee should know about the place they mm-hmm. work mm-hmm. that are normally stored right. somewhere in ad um that you can just quiz the user the user on just to get that information but you know the, we've we've all we've probably all read the mitnick um <laughs> books uh and essentially that it, it just it's just harder isn't it for the for the attacker to get that information in order to use it somewhere else um the the concept mm. of social engineering isn't ne- isn't just calling up the 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 target and guessing your way through it's a, it's a much mm. more long and and drawn out process in most circumstances so yeah, I, yeah. I didn't really I hadn't really thought of that but someone has to well, yeah. that that that's it's a serious thing though the thing is if you're going to win, invest a load of money buying everyone these hardware security tokens and you've got this absolutely top notch advanced sophisticated security system but you have to then deal with the problem of what happens if someone loses the key. And so you have to deal with that somehow. And mm-hmm. so something like the temporary access pass is, is kind of needed, but then you have to have that serious conversation as to, okay, what's, what's our policy going to be? How are we going to, you know, how are we going to evaluate when we can give these out exactly? Cause you know, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, if it's, you can't say, oh, well, if someone's calling up, we'll, we'll check the number on, on the, they're calling from the right number. It's like, well, no, they've lost their phone. That's, that's sort of the point. It's like, <laughs> oh, well, maybe it's a small organization. Maybe it's so all, we'll, we'll, you know, we know each other, we'll recognize their voice. It's like, well, I know. What if someone called and said, oh, yeah, it's, um, this is, this is Joe's wife. Um, yeah, he's lost his, his key, um, can you, or something, you know, would you believe yeah. them? like if you haven't thought about it you might you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's the human you element know. isn't it and that's that's always the weakness. yes there's just the so weak. many once once there's there's the human element there's just so many things that can yeah. go wrong i mean you, you could you could insist that they have to come in the office mm-hmm. you know it, maybe it's not going to happen very often so you bring them in the office but then i don't know what if, if the ceo ceo is on a, a business trip trying to close a really important deal yeah. And then you get you get an urge, urgent phone call. Say, look, I need access right now. It's like, yeah. So, oh, I'm I'm sorry, but we have a policy. <laughs> we can't yeah. can't give you yeah. out. It's like, really, if you don't give me the code right now, I'm going to fire you. <laughs> so I've 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 personally you had know what that, I mean? that that exact um, that exact really? oh, almost exact scenario. <laughs> yeah, where we had a process mm. for for transferring data between mm. a secure network and an insecure network. And mm. um, the CEO, yeah, um, was, was in the room and said, I need to, I need to transfer data from this, this network to the other network. Mm. Do you have the form? Right. Didn't have the form. I'm mm. afraid I can't, I can't do that. I, you know, because, and my, you know, my boss was, was, was standing next to me. And I was thinking, is this a test? <laughs> yeah. Because I can't win, right? So no. I I, st- I stood by it and and, and said and yeah. asked my boss to to approve it. Um, so yeah. I had, so I, I did it because my boss approved it. But I said I can't do it, and I didn't do it until yeah. it was until it was approved elsewhere. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I think I was almost almost going to get fired for that if my, if my yeah. boss wasn't wasn't there. Right. Because I would have stood by it. it the, the whole point mm. is he set the rule. 
So yeah, yeah, I <laughs> couldn't really break it in front of him. But there you go. That's uh, I, I, yeah. I, I get your point. So I suspect that the temporary access password might be cursed because <laughs> whoever's responsible for actually handing them out is it might might be trapped in a bit of a no-win situation where we are know, we are missing security it. depends on them mm. making perfect decisions in an impossible situation mm. and they will get the blame so if they the, make the, the wrong choice the idea of of a of a, a help desk agent having to reset a password mm. is always is always going to be cursed isn't it so so there's mm. that, but there is there is this concept of yeah. um, trusted device. So in in Intune and, and in um, in hybrid mm -hmm. AD, we have this concept of the dev the device itself that you're using to do mm -hmm. things on could be registered, and um, yeah. and could be you know it's got a TPM in it, it's joined a domain, it's, ah, it's become it's, compliant it's, for various reasons yeah. that we that you know that are, are def well defined. So you can say that you trust the device. And as long as the user is yeah. use, has authenticated into the device using a PIN or biometric, then they could use that yeah. device to set that strong authentication method using that device. Yeah. But in yeah. that case, they wouldn't need the temporary access pass. So it's, yes. Yes. it's, it's, not, um, it's not really helpful. But Yeah, ideally having more than one key and the, the TPM built into a device is, is essential. It's kind of like having a Yubi key built into the, mm. the device, sort of in the, kind of the way it works. Yeah. So having having a spare key or having a device that's functioning as a key or something like that is, is, is sort of much better. A much better fallback is to fall, if you can fall back to another strong authentication method, that would be great. But it's just that you know you're always going to have these situations where you know user loses the the key and then you know yeah. you do have to deal with that somehow. Yeah. But it was such a good idea. It. <laughs> Sorry, um, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, obviously, Andy's gonna gonna watch this video when we when we stick it yeah. out on. on well, I'll well, I'll, 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 I'll point one one more thing that um, sort of bugged me a bit when I was uh, watching go on, the then. video. Go on, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's just that 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 URL, the aka dot ms slash my security info that you have to send them to. It'd be really bad if that was replaced by a phishing URL, wouldn't it? Yeah, like if someone just happened to go to the <clears> wrong <throat> site with their temporary password. What you mean if you if you did some clever stuff on Google, for instance, to to pick up very similar misspellings to that? Um, yeah, like well. you could. Yeah, you, if you if you registered do a domain with a a mis misspelling or something like that, um, yeah. I'd, I you know it's sort of. It it just it just feels to me like that particular point is is something that you know if someone mistypes it or you know um, whatever there's, there's, there's potential for something to go wrong there. So that's that's just the other thing that was bugging me. Yeah, I mean you could do a lot if you if you registered something similar to aka.ms, you could have a lot of. of... Of fun with with um with capturing users who were who were typing a k o dot m s or something. Yeah. No, maybe not. I don't know if you can register an m s domain. Actually, is that a thing? You can, maybe that is. Well, I did check. To... I did check. Apparently, it isn't. It isn't a Microsoft specific thing. It's it's Montserrat. All oh, right. Yeah. Any want and buy one. Yeah. Do you yeah. have to live there? So you might. Well, I mean, I I think. I think Go GoDaddy was offering them, for, you know, reasonable price. <laughs> okay. I mean, and and well, I, I say I say that Go, Go, GoDaddy is uh, it's, you don't don't use GoDaddy; it's, it's cheaper <laughs> options. But <laughs> I say a reasonable price. Yeah, they okay. don't really for reasonable price, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you get you get some good service from GoDaddy, though, right? You know, we might get sponsored by them at some point. Don't come on, don't don't ruin everything. Yeah, but. Yeah, yeah, but wait till they actually do sponsor you before. You... Right, fine, yeah, fine, yeah. I do yeah. actually. One of my domains is hosted by GoDaddy, but um, okay, but um, not this one. That's fine. Yeah, good. Okay. So we've hit. We've almost hit an hour. So what? What? What else did you have planned? Yeah. Well, yes. The thing is, I am actually getting to 
the the big important thing. And then oh, I think right. we're done. We've not, not hit that. Okay, good. Yeah, but probably the most the most interesting thing is that the um, the U two two F or FIDO two tokens solve the phishing problem. So, so what, what the, the protocol, protocol is designed, designed in such a way that, that it, it checks the URL for you. So if, so you, if go you go to a phishing site, site and, then and then you plug in your key and you, and you put your pin in everything, the key is going to say, no, no. That's, that's, that's not the right URL. You're connected to a different URL. <clears throat> uh, okay. Go on. How? So it's 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 just simply that they've designed that in, into the protocol. So, in terms of the messages being exchanged between the key and the server, one of the things that's in that transaction is that um, it takes the URL and it, it you know digitally signs it in the key and then sends it back, so the server can then check that the user is connecting via the same URL that it's expecting. And that's then kind of building on the, the HTTPS cert authentication certificate for the domain. Mm. So as assuming that, you know, you're on an HTTPS site and the um, certificate system has authorized that you are definitely really connected to that domain, then, and your web browser's got that URL and the server can check that you, the end user really is connected to that URL, then the, the phishing problem sort of goes away. Well, at least I've heard that Google uh, gave all their employees, uh, you know, some kind of hardware authentication tokens using U U2F, and they, they claim that since then they've had zero phishing attacks because it just it just doesn't work. I mean. The, the user experience is going to be, you know, someone puts the key in and they're like, oh, it's not working, this stupid thing. We spent all this money on this thing and it's not working. I'm trying to log in. It's not working. Yeah. You know, you get, you'll, get a, you'll get a call from an angry person, but you'll say, yeah, that, it's doing its job. <laughs> Just saved you from a phishing attack. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that is, that is impressive, actually. I didn't, I didn't know that at all. That is... is... Apart from all the other stuff that I I've learned during this, that is definitely hmm. something I had no idea about. So yes, brilliant. And so the, and the FIDO two token is uses exactly the same thing. So you know if you're using the FIDO two passwordless, you know it's 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 passwordless, so it's much easier to use, and you can't be fished. Mm. I mean, I say that as a strong claim, and since this is actually going out on the internet, I, I can't really guarantee that this is going to stand the test of time. Yeah. You know, there are, nothing's perfect, but, you know, there is a specific mechanism in it to prevent phishing that does seem to work in practice. Hmm. No, that, that is, and then that is genuinely, genuinely good. Yeah. And then the last thing is the last problem, the password database leak. <clears throat> yeah. Because it uses public key cryptography, which means that, you know, there's a public key and there's a private key and the, the device stores the private key and the private key never leaves the device. The thing that's stored on the server is, is a public key. And the thing about a public key is, is it doesn't really matter if it's public doesn't really help you. It's only, it only matters if the private key leaks. Mm -hmm. So if you're using U2F or FIDO2 keys and their password database leaks, then you, they'll get everyone's public keys, but they're pretty much useless. Hmm. Yeah, indeed. So, so yeah, so the, the U2F and FIDO2 methods pretty much as well as the initial the problem that all of these things solve these also solve the phishing which is a huge one mm -hmm. and the problem of you know leaked leak databases
Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I, you know, I knew I knew passwordless was was good, and and you know that's that's synonymous with Fido too. And now I guess because of what Microsoft have how Microsoft are implementing that. Um. So I knew it was good, but I didn't realize that it was backed by actual tangible security benefits that were just mm. were above and beyond just not having a password because passwords are bad. So that is, yeah, that's, that's yeah. really got my mind, my mind spinning. Yeah. Um, Although bear in mind that passwordless does, uh, as far as Microsoft's concerned, also includes the, the Microsoft Authenticate app, which of course, yeah. isn't, doesn't, doesn't solve those problems. So just passwordless in itself, not so much, but the FIDO two key, I, I don't know. I'm 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 pretty impressed. If you don't have to remember password and you can't be fished and you know you don't have to worry about the leaked password databases, that's solving a lot a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. You know, even even if even if it introduces some others, like what happens when you lose the key and things. You know, I, I, it's um it's looking pretty promising, but there there isn't a lot of support for it. Generally, I think Microsoft the only place I've seen that the FIDO2 support, but it has been added as a web standard called uh, WebAuthn, mm -hmm. where it should now be, you know, the web browsers are all implementing it in such a way that it should be easy for websites to start adding support for it. And so, you know, maybe in a few years, it'll start becoming more common and we can actually have strong passwordless authentication, hmm. you know, in general use. <clears throat> no, indeed. Uh, so, just one last question, just on the file, on the on the on the YubiKey thing. You know, when you've got, I've got the one that has a little, um, it's, you know, it's got the little circle on that you touch in order to activate mm -hmm. it and to do it, and it 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 yeah. spits out a a string. What's that? Mm -hmm. What is the string? Um, well, that's one of the many YubiKey methods, and um, I mean, I think all it's really doing is uh, it installs itself as a, a USB keyboard and then just yeah. types a really long password. And I'm not entirely clear, right. clear as to whether it's yeah, just, just a really long static password, or I think you might be able to do it as where it's it's actually a time-based Right, right password and so it's, it, it's sort of can it know. can it communicate with the website then and and do the one time password that, concept uh no the thing is that 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 is as simple as it's a, t a keyboard and it's just typing right. stuff so you press the button and it just types you know you if you open notepad and press the button it just starts typing yeah, cool. Yeah, indeed. I've, 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 turned it, I've turned it off on mine because it's really annoying because it just starts typing stuff. Yeah, I, I saw uh, I was, in I was random windows. A, and it's like, yeah, I was watching a webinar. In fact, ignite the ignite conference. <laughs> Some someone who was presenting uh -huh. just just spammed spammed the chat window with um with a load, and someone <laughs> said, "Yeah, you've you've just tapped your YubiKey, haven't you?" Uh, so yeah, yeah, just just curious. Yeah. Well, um, is there anything else you want to go through, or is that is that you? Well, I, I think I think that's probably enough. I, I, no, how is. long have we been? <laughs> so one hour, one hour, three minutes. I think we'll right. close it there. Nice, that's, that's a good place to that's, start. Stop it, then. It, yeah. it is, yeah, definitely. So thank you very much for well, certainly for going through all that with me. I've learned a lot. Hopefully, the viewers will learn a lot. Um, I already know that I want to do a, a, another session on the YubiKey because you you've obviously mm -hmm. got some more to tell me on that. So. That would be good. Do you have anything else that you, you want to cover in future sessions? Is there anything else we can look forward to? Uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll see how the next one goes. Um, we might be able to go into more detail on some of these other things, but we'll, we'll see. What about demos? Have you got any demos lined up? Are you able to, to do anything like that, or is it not possible to, well, to demo yeah, that kind of well, thing? Well, I, I can probably demo... Um, you know, they use using a Yubi key for the the time based one time passwords. You know, I could right. I could do a demo on just using using Yubi key generally or mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll see. Fine, good. Well, thank you very much, Stephen. This has been brilliant, uh, and this has been Get Modern. So thank you very much for 
watching, please like and subscribe.